you. That is an interesting question. <laughs> uh, I'm an engineer, uh, environmental engineer. Uh, in my world, um, if I'm wearing my hat as an engineer, everything is easy to solve because technology can solve everything. Basically, yeah. Uh, but there are lots of factors that um, affecting the application and the accessibility and the visibility of any technology in, in, in daily lives. So uh, when we address climate change, um, it's also almost similar. We have to find a way to simplify it. So I have always to find a way to simplify engineering terms or solutions of technology terms uh, into a simple word and a simple explanations. It's similar with, with um, climate change. If you explain climate change uh, with the language that used by scientists, nobody will understand clearly. So um, sometimes I use simple words or just connect it with the daily experience of people so they can relate it uh, with what they're, they're um, experiencing. Uh, also link it up with uh, whatever around them. For instance, if we are, if I'm addressing um, the climate change uh, from coal fire power plants, I'm not talking about carbon footprints. I'm not talking about the uh, emissions of CO2 emissions to, to people on the ground. But I asked them, what do you feel? What, what do you see around you? They said, oh, I got sick and so on and so on. So do you think from where? And they pointed out the coal fire power plants. So it's 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 not only the wording of carbon footprint or CO2 emissions that's important to address climate change, but in a way, indirectly, if we also engage people to understand what's going on um, in their um, neighborhoods, in their house, in their village, um, climate change. Uh, targets or, or goals can be achieved, but through many ways. This month, people or countries started talking about the net zero emissions and every country have different targets and different goals. Although for us, as citizen, it's it's nice to achieve the. It will be good for all of us to achieve the net zero emissions as soon as possible. But of course, they uh, they will there will need uh, they will need a lot of steps to uh, to achieve that goal. So if if we ask or we we call uh, for uh, uh, a quicker or a faster. Um, target to achieve, for instance, 2030, it means government have to push a lot of buttons, especially private sectors, to reduce their, their emissions and so on. And that's involving a lot of resources as well to install many, many kinds of technologies to, to improve their uh, emissions and so on. Um, so, uh, I know that I understand that so many countries also calling for um, decarbonization by uh, reducing the use of coal, but India and Indonesia are still, I believe we still use and love, uh, love coal. <laughs> Even some coal from Indonesia actually ended up in India. Um, so some people will still want to continue the practice business as usual. Um, and most of them are um, uh, companies with strong financial uh, support um, and investors backing them up, bankers and so on and so on. So it's uh, because they have a strong lobby uh, to approach government, they need uh, opposition to pressure. <laughs> so the government need to hear more from the other side what we want, because if government do not hear from us, um, Greta did a good job screaming all the time, but it's it will be tiring if, if we have to scream all the time. So we have to choose uh, smartly our fight 
this uh, century, we have different battles and different way of fighting everything. Um, when I was young, um, when I was 18, uh, I was graduated from high school and I went to an engineering school. The story or the environmental pressure was ozone holes. So that's the only thing, the ozone crisis and then what else? Air pollution uh, from traffic and then water, water, solid waste, yeah. So that's the major pressure. Uh, but now, well, um, 30 years, 40 years after that, it's different, different issues. Yeah, it's, it's, it's our biggest challenge, uh, the challenge of the century, I guess. Um, but uh, to start with, we have to uh, we have to start calling to turn off the tap. It means there, is, uh, there should not be new investment on plastic production because we have to deal with the existing one. So as time, we can't, <laughs> we can't break because, you know, at, at the moment we have uh, oof, um, only only nine percent, only ten percent of plastics in the last in, in the last fifty years. Only nine to eleven percent of plastics that produced by uh, uh, worldwide by by all countries can be recycled. So the rest of it is just still hanging around. Mm. Can you imagine that? Only yeah. nine to eleven percent. So if we don't uh, stop um, the flow, we have to turn the tap off. If you got uh, flooded, so you have to turn the tap off. So that's the best solution. But um, don't stop, don't stop calling for turn off the tap, because we have to keep shouting. Okay, turn off the tap, turn off the tap, because it's already flooded. We got flooded with plastics everywhere, not only in the water, not only in the soil, but also in the air. So microplastics in the air now also. Um, scientists found it. Uh, it's 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 airborne. Yeah. Um, so I think um, I'm still struggling also to find a way how we are going to um, manage the existing piles, the unwanted plastics. Because if we are dealing with the new plastics, for instance, um, uh, replacing the coffee cup with the uh, with the real cup or the reusable cup, that is easy. But to deal with the existing legacy um, that piling up behind you, <laughs> that is yeah. another headache. Yeah, because the the solutions could be pyrolysis, gasification, so melting them or or use it for fuel, which even going to uh, add to our burden and the environmental burden because they're also part of the fossil fuels. So if the solutions for the the old piles are waste to energy, ooh, so we have to calculate it. Uh, that's the additional uh, carbon uh, emission. Yeah. It's, it's also the roles of analysts or researchers or market analysts, they call it, uh, that uh, keep convincing government and officials that there are markets for recycling. And I keep saying, no, if you see, uh, for instance, the UK, so the UK government has been advised that, um, well, you can, you can keep continue uh, sending waste abroad to other countries because there is a market for recycling, plastic recycling. And I told them, I said, there, it's, it's a false, it's a false uh, hope that they think there is a market. And it's a wrong promise because they sent, what they sent to developing countries are uh, in majority uh, waste that cannot be recycled. Yes, that's that's need uh, innovative solutions, uh, hybrid solutions, and uh, yeah, it's it's creative solutions combining, uh, for instance, uh, yeah, combining different technologies, 
and approach to solve problems. Um, the solutions that we have at the moment is not enough to solve the problems. So we, we have to push ourselves, we have to push researchers to keep looking for uh, innovative ideas, um, how to solve the problem. Uh, 